Hello and welcome to CIS 205, Introduction to Data Communications and Networking. Welcome to week two. As we get started with a new week for this class, I had a few announcements that I wanted to share with you, so let's get started. Item number one, please check your North Carolina Wesleyan email account daily. As an online student, this is the principal conduit that the school is going to use to communicate with you. This may seem commonsensical, but uh, based on the re uh, activity that some of the students have already shown in this course, uh, that's not happening. So again, if you're not already in the habit of checking your North Carolina Wesleyan email account every day, please do so. Every update that I'm going to send through this course, uh, through Genzabar or directly through email, is going to land in your official North Carolina Wesleyan email in basket. So uh, it's critical that you, you maintain uh, good communication with me. And again, the primary way that we're going to do that is through email. If you have any questions about that, please send me an email. Item number two, attendance for online classes. North Carolina Wesleyan College has changed the requirements, I believe this is the first term, for attendance in online classes. What this means is that uh, the college is starting to take a very uh, hard line uh, with what constitutes attendance for an online class. It's not expected that, for example, that if you're taking an online class that you're just getting out of sitting in a uh, traditional classroom. So as such, the attendance policies are being looked at more stringently, and I have to start for all of my online classes now recording attendance for you each week. The primary vehicle that I will use to record your attendance is the participation in the discussion forum. So even if you're taking your quizzes, even if you're doing some of the other assignments we may have outlined, it's important that you also participate in the discussion forum. Again, that's the metric that we're going to use to determine whether or not you are participating in the course. So you might have seen this in some of your other classes. But uh, again, the college is trying to be more vigilant with uh, how students are counted present in an online class. The, uh, your lack of participation in this area could impact your ability to continue uh, with the course. So if you have any questions, please send me an email and uh, I'll be glad to discuss it with you. Chapter, retake, uh, chapter quiz retake policy. I think most of you are aware, some of you, of you took advantage of this during the first week, some of you did not, but uh, I offer a chapter retake policy in this class, which means that every chapter quiz can be taken twice, but the quiz must be taken, the retake must be taken before the due date. So you can take it any time during the week. I, I recommend that you not wait until Saturday or Sunday to do it, but you can take the quiz twice before the due date, and only the highest grade will be recorded. That's a very important feature. So I know some of you took advantage of that this past week. That's fantastic, great. Again, that will be in place for all of our chapter quizzes. But for those of you that did not, I assume that either you weren't aware of the retake policy or that something interfered with your ability to take the quiz again, quizzes again. So for those of you that may be interested in retaking quizzes this past week, I'll be reaching out to you to see if you're interested in doing that, or see if you were not aware of the policy, or again, what, what sort of miscommunication might have occurred. So again, like all the other items, if you have a question, please send me an email. Remind.com. So Remind.com is a new tool that I've introduced this term that is for, as the name suggests, reminding students when assignments are due or otherwise communicating with them. One of the features I like is something that sponsors office hours. Now, Genzabar offers a chat feature as well, and I've used that before, but uh, Remind was new, and I have, again, tried, I've introduced that to this class, and that's going to be my preferred tool for offering office hours on Wednesdays from 8 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. So if you've not already received an email from me, and you should have, from Remind.com, then uh, please look for it in your junk folder. And if you can't find it there, then you know, again, reach out to me. The All of the accounts that I set up in Remind.com were built on your official North Carolina Wesleyan email account. 
I can also input uh, cell phone numbers. I haven't pulled those from the college yet, but that would allow you to um, get text reminders or updates to your smartphone in addition to sending them to your Wesleyan email account. So anybody that's interested in that, please let me know. That's a feature that I, you know, as soon as I get the phone numbers from the college, I'll be plugging that into remind.com as well. This class is a writing intensive class and part of that is uh, satisfied with the uh, rather detailed work that we have to do the, in the uh, discussion forum and the other part of that is uh, going to be tied up in a research paper. We'll take a look at the requirements for a research paper here in just a moment but it's uh, not too early to be thinking about what type of topic you would like to um, pursue or, or in, uh, research for your paper. In fact Let's take a look at that now. So here are your research paper requirements. Again, it's a fairly significant piece of work. Your paper needs to be at least eight pages long, but no longer than 11 pages. And I encourage you to read the requirements here very, very carefully. Every term, students lose points on this assignment unnecessarily because they didn't read the, uh, the directions. So let's go over these very quickly. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. But uh, first of all, your paper must be original. Plagiarism will be dealt with per the bylaws of the North Carolina Wesleyan Handbook, uh, which really says that uh, you, at a minimum, uh, get a zero for the assignment. Uh, at a maximum, you could be suspended from the college. So the, uh, North Carolina Wesleyan, as all colleges do, take this type of offense very seriously. The academic integrity of the college is at stake if students are turning in work that is not original. So consequently, we will be taking this very seriously in this class. The, your paper should be 12-point uh, font times New Roman, double-spaced, standard margins, which means one inch on all sizes, please use page numbers. Okay, Again, this is one that students lose points on almost every time, but please use page numbers. Include a cover sheet with your name, paper title, course title, and date. You will need a minimum of five references for this paper, and, and by that I mean good quality references. For example, Wikipedia cannot be cited as a reference. The quality of your references will affect the, your research paper grade. At least one source of your five must be a peer-reviewed uh, academic journal. And my you know, students run into problem with this requirement frequently. And here's why. They don't understand what it means to be a peer-reviewed academic journal. And what that means is that a peer-reviewed journal is a scientific journal that others in the field, other practitioners of the field, have read and made some sort of assessment of the author's claim. So if I'm a, a, a researcher and I have claimed to found a method for creating cold fusion and I write a paper about it, and try to, to publish that in a peer-reviewed journal of some sort, my peers, other scientists, are going to try to duplicate the methods uh, that I have presented in my paper to see if they get the same results. And if they don't, well, then my paper has failed the test. But that's what a peer-reviewed journal is. It's a, it's a scientific or academic journal that uh, seeks to uh, test whatever theory the author has put forward with other members of the field. So it's the highest level of academic integrity. Again, to, to be published in a top tier journal means to expose yourself to the other, you know, the, the best minds in the field that will test your uh, assumptions, test your theories, to see if your conclusions are accurate. So you need to select one such journal among your five for your research paper. Uh, your paper needs to be a maximum of eight pages. Again, please keep in mind this is a double spaced paper. The uh, maximum of eight pages and a, uh, sorry, a minimum of eight pages and a maximum of 11 pages. The, your page count does not include your cover page. It does not include your bibliography. And if you have images embedded in your document, 
uh, that doesn't count as stretching the the length of the paper so please be careful about this uh, you as you can see if your paper is less than eight pages you will lose 15 points off your paper grade if your paper is more than 11 pages you will lose 15 points also and and this will come up in uh, week four uh, well week three or four I'll have to go back and check but you'll have an, it, you'll be well, notified well in advance when the uh, when you must submit your research paper topic but as the last bullet point here says if I do not approve your research paper before you submit it I will not accept it that means a zero for that grade so you must wait for me to approve your paper before you begin your research on it with that in mind, let's look at some of the suggested topics. Okay, This is not meant to be an exhausted list uh, by any means, but this should give you some, some ideas. Uh, encryption, IP version 4 versus IP version 6, net neutrality, etc. I can let you read these on your own. This document, which is called Research Paper Format and Topics, is posted in the handout section on uh, Genzabar for this class. So you can download your own copy of this and, and read it at a later time. As you think about topics for your research paper, here's a, a suggestion. Try to find something that ties in with something that you're doing at work or something that you're, you're interested in. If, if it's a topic you're interested in, you're going to retain this information a lot more and put forth a much better effort than if it's something you're doing just to fill a, requir a requirement for the class. It won't make for an interesting exercise for you and it won't make for interesting reading for me. So I hope that you, you will take the time to consider this assignment carefully and again find something that, that you think is uh, you know pretty exciting. Uh, hopefully uh, because our, our textbook and our course covers so much material you can find something that you can sit down and write uh, between 8 and 11 pages on and uh, get something that you can actually apply. That, that will be the best part of this, uh, this whole exercise is that you would come out of it with either a new understanding for a particular topic or something you could apply to real world uh, needs. So if you have, again, a need in the office or a burning question you've been looking to satisfy, here's your opportunity. Another feature I offer with the research paper is extra credit. For those of you that uh, are so inclined, and I recommend that everybody do this, you can earn 10 points, that's a letter grade, for this assignment if you submit your paper to the writing lab. You uh, can submit your paper online. You don't have to go on campus. Uh, there are a few conditions that you have to meet to get this full credit, but it's a very simple process. And in my mind, there's really no reason uh, you can't do it. This is, this is low-hanging fruit. This is an easy 10 points for you to grab. So to get the extra credit, here's what you need to do. Step one, the, lighting ra the uh, writing lab must send me an email verifying that you submitted your research paper for CIS 205 for them to review. Okay, Then you must take the changes that they suggested and incorporate those into your final version of the paper. And then the, the paper must be submitted to me by the due date. So it's not acceptable, for example, for you to come back to me and say, well, Rick, um, I uh, submitted my paper to the writing lab, but they're not going to be able to get it back in time for me to meet the deadline. Uh, what do I do? Well, what you do is you submit the paper to me as you have it, and you've missed your 10 points for uh, the extra 10 points for the writing lab. Uh, waiting on the writing lab is not an excuse for missing the deadline for the paper. So, again, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. But uh, I would uh, I would suggest that every single student in this class take advantage of submitting your paper to the writing lab. Uh, I will tell you from uh, personal experience that um, uh, we I I conduct interviews all the time, and uh, the uh, the the way a candidate presents themselves on paper is important, and life cannot be conducted as a text message, and so if if you've not written a serious academic paper recently. Uh, this will be uh, a good exercise for you, but 
please understand that um, writing skills do matter, even in this you know email text-filled world. That uh, people do judge you by the the way you express yourself or present yourself with the written word. So again, please take this assignment uh, assignment seriously, and uh, please make it something that can uh, contribute meaningfully to something you're doing at work or a question that you've had about the field. Okay, so that's the research paper. Now, Microsoft Imagine, two components here. We're going to talk about both these items, Microsoft Imagine and computer specifications. Microsoft Imagine, some of you indicated to me that you received an email this week with your credentials for Microsoft Imagine. That's great. If you have not, uh, then you can go ahead and pull that information by visiting the uh, Microsoft Imagine website. I have put a link on the Genzabar page to allow you to go to the Microsoft uh, Imagine homepage and uh, let me show you what you need to do. So this is for those of you that have not received your credentials, have not received your email. I suspect that you've already had an account created for you and here's how you get to it. Okay, so here is the uh, Genzabar homepage. Here's our landing page for CIS 205. And if you'll notice over here in the bookmark section, I have put a new bookmark in here labeled New Microsoft Imagine. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. So here's the Microsoft Imagine home page. And the, if you don't have your credentials, here's what you do. Go to the upper right-hand side of the page, click Sign In, and you'll notice that just below the username and password uh, text boxes, you've got a link for forgot username or password. Click that link. Then on the next page, you notice this one auto-filled for me. On the next page, you'll have the opportunity to enter your username or email address. Please enter in your North Carolina Wesleyan email address and click Submit. You will receive uh, an email, usually in just a few minutes, from Microsoft Imagine that will allow you to access the materials that they have here. So let's take a look just for a moment to show you what they have. We will be using this for labs going forward. So uh, it, I think you will like the catalog of, uh, of operating systems and other uh, software titles that you have here. Let's take a look at the operating systems. So you notice the top uh, two are Windows 10 and Server uh, Windows Server 2016. No surprise that those two are paired together because that's what Microsoft would like for you to use together. Use Windows 10 for your clients and use Windows Server for your servers. So we'll be experimenting a little bit with Windows 10, perhaps later with Windows Server 2016. Uh, and we'll also be using a product called Oracle VirtualBox. But uh, at any rate, beyond what we do in this class, this is a really exciting feature. You have got access to you know, dozens and dozens of software applications here. So I recommend that you go through this catalog and see what's available. I suspect that you'll be able to find something that is of use to you. Now, this account should be good. Uh, I believe the college does this for two years, and, uh, and at which point, provided you're still a student at North Carolina Wesleyan, you can simply renew it. But um, before you start downloading everything uh, on, on the website, please be aware that the, the, the timer starts when you download the software. So if you think that you need something today, terrific download it. If you're downloading something sort of like a squirrel saving nuts for the winter, don't. Resist that urge because the, again the timer starts as soon as you download an application. So if you don't need it now, download it later because again uh, if you download something, I'll just make up a number, let's say that you download Access 2016 uh, just because you can and you think you might like to play with it. Well, let's say that in, for this particular application that the download, this license is good for 12 months. And 12 months from now, or let's say 11 months from now, you finally have a project, or you've finally gotten around to using Access 2016. And whoops, now you've only got a month left on your license. 
well, that can be kind of inconvenient. So if you don't need it right now, I wouldn't wouldn't download it. But I would go through the catalog just so that you're aware of what you've got. Because there, again, uh, there this is a very rich catalog of uh, many of the uh, best and most popular titles that Microsoft has to offer. And they're available to you free under academic license since you're a student at North Carolina Wesleyan College. So that's Microsoft Imagine. Now the next thing I need to know is about your computer. Now I sent out an, an email uh, over the weekend asking for folks to, to answer eight questions for me about their computer. Basic questions about what's your operating system, how much RAM do you have, how much hard drive space do you have, etc. Please look for that email and respond to as quickly as you can. I'm using this to decide what types of labs or what types of work we might be able to do in this class and making sure that everybody has access to some sort of hardware. If you didn't receive that email or you can't find it, please let me know. I'll be glad to resend it. But it is important that I know what type of hardware you have access to or you're using as your principal workstation to determine how to conduct the labs going forward. So this is week two. What's due this week? This week, as is laid out in Genzibar, we have to read chapters three and four and take the corresponding quiz for each chapter. Again, please don't forget, you can take the quiz twice as long as you do it before next Sunday. So again, you can take the quizzes twice before the due date. Please participate in the discussion forum. And there were only a couple of you that did this, but please don't wait until Sunday to post it to the discussion forum. The discussion forum is in many ways meant to be a substitute for the classroom experience. And if you're waiting just before the bell to submit anything, not only is your submission going to be uh, you know, rushed, probably not as, as uh, well thought out as it could be, but you deprive the other students in the class the opportunity of reading your responses and giving them a chance to respond to you. So again, the discussion forum is meant in many ways to be a surrogate for the classroom experience. And if you are not uh, participating during the week, if you're waiting until the ninth hour uh, just before the due date to submit the assignment, you're meeting the letter of the assignment, uh, but you're certainly not meeting the spirit of the assignment. So again, take the time. doesn't have to be a lot of time, but take the time to contribute throughout the week. Uh, and your grade will, will reflect your effort accordingly. Again, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. And that's it. So that's what we're looking at for week two. If you have any questions, send me an email or find me during office hours. Again, our office hours will be Wednesdays from 8 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. Until we meet again, I hope that you have a productive and fruitful experience with uh, the material this week, and I look forward to finding you online. Thanks for your time.